Welcome to Upgrade. I'm your host, Frank the Tank, and today we're going to bring in this monstrosity that you see back here. Uh, it takes on the whole space of the box, as you can see. It's a Dow server, and we're going to take a look at it and see what you get when you purchase a big monstrosity. Now, this, this time this year, um, servers are pretty much dying now. People are buying NAS drives more, but if you want to have more control towards your software and hardware and other stuff that you want to be able to do control management on it, you can do that com with a combination of cloud uh, storage space too. So let's take a look at it. We're not going to go into that detail. We're just going to take a look at the hardware. See when you purchase some, if you're going to purchase some of it. Now this one in the back here in particular was about ten thousand dollars we're talking about so it's a little pricey let's take a look at it and see what you get when you purchase something like this all right so this monstrosity came in with um very secure very um very neat pack um this thing here and it has a front face um so airflow because it's it's nice uh, laser cut uh machine cut so a couple instructions and nothing but empty box and of course Big power cord that we're gonna need so back in the old days you needed two of these now it's only required one so let's take a look at it and see what you get when you purchase something like this so today we're not just gonna take a look at the outside I'm gonna take a look at the inside too so let's go ahead and take a look let's take a look at this monstrosity how many hard drives does it take to run this baby so right now as you can see the porridge t640 all right, let's go ahead and go review. Uh, wireless signal, information center. Um, of course, your power button's here. And here's your service tag number. So when you're gonna call for support, I, I'm not gonna show you that information, but it's on the top. It's always in there. There's no sticker behind it no more. They give you two USBs in the front, one 3.0 and one regular 2.0. And then they give you this connection. This is uh, actually to plug in to your, to do some maintenance on it. So that's what a technician does. Of course, this is a Xeon chip inside, very powerful. Um, Xeon chips are pretty much um, constantly on. They could take a tolerance of a lot of heat. Um, casing in here in the front these these are empty here um I don't, i'm not sure if you can even open them we're going to take a look at it uh, but they're all empty here there's nothing attached they removed the old larger hard drives and they went to the smaller sata connections which are talking about one two three four five six seven eight and 16 we got 16 sata drives one terabyte a piece so you combine it together you do a rate controlling in there uh, one crashes the other one continues on to pick up uh, to remove them you push the button you bring them back out this way as you can see they are hard drives these are mechanical drives they're not solid state hard ssd drives but you can replace them with ssd drive to actually have less heat in there so that's a recommendation easy to replace easy to monitor um, um, these are like I said these are cheaper mechanical drives but down the line you can replace them um, easy to replace smaller hard drives of course they don't they got rid of the larger 3.0 went to the 2.5s um, like I said one SATA SATA's one terabyte push of a button ejects the, the little handle pull it out and easy to replace by removing the screws here we could see that removing the screws on both ends and then just replacing the hard drives um, so 16 of these suckers really really awesome for storage space uh, of course 16 is not going to be enough later down the line um, we want to add more you can just replacing them um, doing the rate control again make sure you're you're knowledgeable of that before you actually start the process because sometimes some people lose a lot of files trying to do things doing that on their own so let's go ahead and take a look at that and if you can see the whole case itself it's a little large nice metallic um, um, brush um gray brush i guess and that's what it is so let's get the get the, get the back of this system this monstrosity of power edge t640 just something like this just to let you know the key is in here they give you the key it's attached to it and then they give you a, a different casing in the front let me see if i could take a look at that so you can replace this to cover it and it will say dow emc now um so we're we're gonna replace we're gonna actually put in the front here and set it up so we know but there's the keys right here 
we can notice so you can replace it and open it up we're gonna look for this key right here this is a different key that you need to actually open the chassis so this key is just to remove the front and so the, the actual hard drives will not be temper it this is recommended to do when you install the hard drives because you don't want anybody to just drop your data or do something while in the process of it so you want to make sure you put the cover on it uh, on top of it on the back of it there's nothing else it's just plastic but the front is metallic um, aluminum I would say uh, that's about it we're gonna look for the other key which is only we only found one key here we're looking for the secondary key we can find it there's no key i just use my regular key you could use a flathead and unlock it through there it's very simple don't like it not secure enough so let's go ahead and take a look at the back before we even take a look at the inside so all right as you can see we do have two ports for ethernet here um these will be mostly for maintenance on the machine itself or if you want to add a different um, uh, domain in here where a separate IP addresses you can do that so and they did give you one, four slots in here one two three four five slots actually um, CPU 2 CPU 1 coolers we have some more slots on the top one two three four uh, so four on the top and then we have your power consumption and this one is a really small but it extends all the way to the back so it looks small from the back but in reality it's a lot larger we're gonna see how, what's how many voltages is in here of course and you could remove this you could replace it this by pushing the button out and then it's screening it out I mentioned one of the most important things that this does not come instructions the instructions are in the actual base itself which I like about it it talks about the two CPUs in here the modules the different connections that we have all the SATA connections and all the single port connections the back signal the front single us front usb connections everything is that you want to know about the motherboard it's all in here and it's all lined up with numbers to match the description of it this is one thing i like about i love about dell they have a very very descriptive manuals everything you do even to take apart they're not worried about you taking things apart because they want you to pretty much dig in but in some cases they do they tell you not to do it because it voids the warranty but in this case uh, they know you you're the first line of defense and you need to know exactly what's connected what's burned out you come into this system you find out what number it is you find out where it's connected on well, what's the cpu for example we're looking for 19 and at 19 it tells you the cpu right there look at this 1919 very good description now on the bay configuration it tells you exactly how it's connected power supply where it's connected to and the secondary button that we saw there it's for another secondary power supply that we have it could be a backup module it, this one only comes with one that's why we saw the little hole in there so very descriptive um vga connection in the front that you could add in there um all the drag connections the the, the dvi connections all this stuff is descriptive especially with the cpus the dims how many memories you can uh, the additional things hot swaps this is important this is important on the hot swaps it tells you what you can swap out while it's on so that's another thing now best thing about it they tell you exactly how to think things it takes apart like signal you could you could actually sync up your phone with it to um, a quick sync to control panel optional so you go in there take a screenshot of it and then you're going to have more details on your phone to run you can always find out what's the status on the server this is a plus this is a great thing not only that because if you're on the field something happens to the server you take a look at your phone you you find out exactly what's the what's the situation you don't even have to go sometimes you call Dell directly they'll send a technician in there they'll open you guys open the door you have somebody there they'll go in there replace the part with the screenshot that you have or the information you downloaded from your phone in here and it gives you a description exactly what's a standard control panel in here everything normal fault which starts you turning yellow this is important guys um it has happened to me many times on it now removing the cpu look at this they give you the instructions step by step how to take take the whole cpu apart they tell you is be careful it's gonna be hot in certain areas how to remove the module how to remove the base replacing it step by step everything in here including taking the plastics off uh, PCL ports including removing them taking out the hot sink 
everything that you're gonna find on the internet as a manual, you'll find it here in back of this plate. Um, step by step, how to remove every module. Love about this. And this is something that I like about Dell. When you lose the information or you don't have internet access, you have the panel that you always open it up and great information to get here. This is a plus if you guys are gonna go into the server or get information about this. So that's about it. They do give you the old VGA connections, um, the old connections to also for the, I forgot the name of this connection, but while back they used to have this to actually control the modules a lot. Uh, they give you four type three um, um, USBs, two regular ones, and then the iDRAC. This is what be where you can actually connect to uh, maintenance and also have remote access do other stuff remotely to a different uh, connection in here in case the system is not um, working properly you could do a diagnosis to here and all that stuff too here's your ethernet ports that you're going to have two different additional ones here these will be the ones that are connected to the internet and to your domain or your network so you would have to enable one of them and then the secondary could be for like i said another second connection here too um, we got plenty of, of connections in the back plenty of space plenty of things to do um, so we're going to take a look at it and see how well it works to open it up once you twist this thing and have it unlocked you push it down and then you push it forward towards you yeah, the whole thing opens up let's put this chassis down the bottom all right so lots of moving parts in here we're gonna talk. We're gonna try to talk about as much as we can on uh, some of the components that we have in here. But there's so much complications and so much um, information in here that I'm not a hundred percent sure of all the stuff. But I'm gonna try to be the best knowledge as I can to which where you could um, see more of this in the inside and see how easy it is to maintenance one of these systems. So airflow plenty of airflow this controls the module the airflow for the cpu and the gpu actually more of the cpu in here which is the xeon chips now let's go ahead and see if we could remove this and and talk a little bit more about it take it inside <clears throat> so we're gonna try to see if i could i cannot remove this module i don't want to remove this module because this one actually keeps the airflow and it's, it looks a little complicated to take apart and i don't want to avoid the warranty because i see all these cables running here so we're just going to take it inside guys if it's possible and show you guys just a little bit more of what's inside here so if you guys can see the back of it there's there's another cpu in the back out there and that's another cooling um, um area that you can see because where what happened with here the airflow can uh, completely covers this whole two areas so we have two cpus here we have one here that's covered here we have one cover here and then the other one right behind it so it's a dual cpu xeon chips um if you can see them they're being this this is what makes your whole network run when you have a server like this and this is a very powerful server um extremely fast at the moment right now um for transfer rate i'll put some of the details if it's possible on it and um here we have all the modules, all the ports available that we have. Of course, we have one taken by this um, um, Ethernet connection ports that we have. And this is a, a, a 10,000 um, uh, gigabyte transfer, I believe it is. Or, or I'm not quite sure. I have to look into the details on here. This is, it tells you instructions of how the two modules where we have the CPU 1, CPU 2. And in the front, like I was telling you by CPU one, this one cools the CPU one that's pretty much in here. And I would recommend you once in a while, open your servers, take your fans out and clean them out. And they connect with a module connection. If you guys can see that, very simple, clean them out. Um, airflow goes inside. Remember labels inside, airflow is pouring in. Um, you clean this up and you see that little connection there. It's just a puzzle piece. That's all it is So you clean that up once in a while. I'd say once a year at least because um, dust particle uh, mo um, you know, Cloth mods and all sorts of things get stuck spider webs. So removing it very simple like a puzzle piece Airflow flows in here. It sucks the air in here 
cools through the CPU 1, CPU 2, and I think there's a divider in here where it cools one of the CPUs and then it cools the other one. This big module that is, is, is cover, it's secure, it's, it's gripping onto some of the components in here. So my recommendation is just don't mess with it if you're not if you're not familiar with it because it's so new I don't want to take it apart and I'm afraid of it for the price of it it's just not gonna be worth taking me uh, this off and then put it back on um, fan controls they have some fan controls in here for actually this is for the actual memory to make some more room so you guys can remove this module which is covering here and this actually holds down the memory in case uh, the server falls or goes sideways uh, depends how you put it together on different formats uh some people have it straight up standing up some people have it tilted um so it depends how you want it or how you're it, it, uh, setting it up make sure you do have enough room for the airflow coming in uh you at least need two inches or three sometimes depending on the on the module but the whole system is all set up in here uh, extra power connections here for the battery power in case uh, your module needs a secondary battery. There is another uh, port here and this is a front VGA port that they have in here. Um, another connection module. They have other things here. Batsig. Uh, they have all these additional that I've probably never going to use to be honest with you. <laughs> Um, usually when I buy a server like this, I set it up, I program it, um, and set it up for the projects, the jobs, syncing up, uh, works great with Microsoft products. In fact, it is a, a, a server, Microsoft server product in here, 2019, um, server installed in here and it was pre-installed. So all we have to do is set up the, the module, the domain and the connections and have it ready to go. And they do give you additional SATA connections in here for these modules that you see in here. One, two, three modules, four spaces so you could connect additional stuff in here. It, it, what I've seen in some of the projects and some of these um, um, servers is that they even install a, a visualization display in the front to see how everything's working. But that's that's a little overkill. You can do that, set up a module, so displaying stuff and connecting it. but. Uh, it's a little, I don't want you to avoid the warranty, so read your manual. Now, warranty on this system depends on what package you have. There's additional, there's gold, silver, and, and platinum, and all that stuff. Um, I believe the best one is that four hour service. Um, this system goes down in four, Dell sends a provide, uh, service tech within four hours to replace the module, replace the hardware, or, um, but they do have to log in and do a diagnostics on it because the system's really good at, diagnosing itself and finding out what is the actual power a problem it could be a power issue it could be a fan it could be a cpu and if you can see the cpus are really embedded in there there's no fans on it at all it's just the radiators on both of them and like i said airflow comes in here it airflow comes to the back it streams in here and it goes back out that's pretty much how it is there is no fans to so suck in the air out at all you can see it so the airflow is monitored through here and it goes out there's no additional fans anywhere but these two fans you're pretty much constantly depending on these two fans and that's pretty much it the second module is completely in the back and you haven't seen the rest of the system where the power power connection the power module is back here it's it's huge it's like we're talking about three two inches thickness so there is uh it's pushing the whole system a little bit forward so you only see half of the system where the power consumption is on the back like i said the power entry is smaller but it, it takes pretty much the backboard of it um very simple if you guys like stuff like this let me know so if you guys like stuff like this about servers networks and stuff like that let me know i'll give you some more information i just want to show you the inside of a server what's uh what it takes to actually run a server you need a nice cool area uh most of the time when we put them on racks we put them standing up sometimes depending on the module and depending on the space uh airflow you have to have enough airflow in the back so just to let you guys know you need that space uh, it's necessary because there's two fans in this system we want to make sure there's enough fan airflow coming in too also now you could add additional fans later down the line and in, uh intakes and stuff like that but it's not necessary xeon chips are are tolerant to a lot of heat um you'll get a warning light before it even shuts down there um your battery modules will will light up blink up and stuff like that so there's a lot of um uh, fallbacks on this uh, backup system sorry so if you guys like that stuff like this let me know i'm your host frank the tank and we're out